Hello, thanks for joining us. I'm Michael Holligan. Today I'm in Tallahassee, Florida at the future home of Penny and Dwayne Dyer and their quadruplets to show you an innovative foundation system that's been used since colonial times but is often forgotten by architects and contractors. It's called a raised floor system, but in your neck of the woods they may refer to it as a raised wood floor, a raised floor foundation, or maybe even a crawl space. As a builder, I'm sold on the raised floor system. My last two project houses in the Dallas area have both incorporated this type of foundation. Essentially, a raised floor system is an assembly of beams, girders, joists, and panels comprised of various wood products designed to raise the living space off the ground, thus isolating the home from both moisture and pest. Raised floor systems offer a host of advantages compared to its slab on grade counterpart. Some advantages include durability. Many of America's oldest homes still stand today on raised floor systems. Protection. A raised floor system is the most practical and cost-effective way to provide protection for both water and insects. Your buyers could potentially save thousands on flood insurance alone if you build in flood-prone areas. Comfort. Your clients will rave about the comfortable walking surface since a raised floor foundation provides a cushion that will make walking in the home easier on your client's legs and back. Plus, since wood is a natural insulator, you can be sure that the raised floor homes you build will stay warmer in the winter and cooler in summer. Flexibility. Leveling and future repairs due to settling are simple. Remodeling is a breeze because the system allows easy access to plumbing, electrical, and AC systems. Plus, it's great for landscaping or providing clients with popular upgrades such as porches and decks. Beauty. The difference in appearance of a raised home versus one on the ground is dramatic. There really is no contest. When you consider a raised floor system, you're also considering the environment. Remember, wood is one of the world's only renewable and sustainable building products making a raised floor system a far superior environmental choice when compared with the slab on grade foundation. Contrary to popular opinion, North American forests are abundant and growing. In fact, forest cover in the U.S. and Canada is about the same size as it was 100 years ago. The final reason to consider going with the raised floor foundation, especially this year, has to do with your bottom line. With the current shortage on concrete and the high price of steel, it's a great time to consider a raised floor system for your next project. And not only will a raised floor system keep you on budget, it'll also help keep your project online and on time. So I've told you about why you should consider building with the raised floor system, but now let's talk about how. The base of the raised floor system is a concrete footing, which is reinforced with rebar. Then, depending on code requirements and site conditions, you can install a brick or concrete masonry unit pier or a stem wall foundation. The system features a 2x10 frame floor platform securely anchored to the seals. You can also consider trusses or eye joists for these applications. Finally, as with most homes, you have the plywood or OSB subfloor that finishes the job. Well, I know the dyers are anxious to get in their home, so why don't we look at the first part of a raised floor system. The first step in the process is to have your excavation contractor prepare the site. You should consult your foundation engineer to determine the proper depth for your job site. For the Dyer project, we moved enough earth to be at a depth of about one foot below the finished grade. Once the lot is cleared and leveled, the contractor has excavated a one foot eight inch wide trench for the footings. Although not a serious problem here in Tallahassee, the depth of these footings should extend below the frost line in colder climates. For this project, the footings are about 12 inches deep. Here in Tallahassee, as in much of the southern United States, the soil just below the surface quickly changes to clay. Expansive clay does not provide a good substrate for foundations and can lead to serious problems between the wet and dry seasons. A standard slab on grade foundation could easily crack or buckle under the enormous pressure caused by soil expansion and contraction. This raised floor system foundation is designed to handle these pressures and is easily adjusted if unanticipated settlement problems arise. Once the contractor has prepared the footing trenches, the crew installs a grid work of steel rebars that will give the footing extra support and tie the system together. Once all the rebar is in place, it's time to pour the concrete. Setting footings is really no different than pouring a concrete slab, they're just smaller. Getting the elevation of the footings correct is important just like it is with slab on grade foundations. Once the concrete is poured and has cured, 
the entire system will work together to resist design loads in all directions. The piers and foundation walls in this home are concrete masonry units. Setting these blocks is a simple job for a skilled masonry crew. Once all of the piers are in place, the crew will fill them with concrete to tie the piers and rebar together. The crew also installs straps or J-bolts for proper anchorage of the floor system. In high wind areas, the J-bolts should be attached to the outside edge to avoid any wind uplift. A double 2x10 mechanically laminated girder runs down the center of the home. This structural member supports the floor joists and interior load-bearing walls. All the seals and girders in this house have been pressure treated with one of the new preservatives, assuring a lifetime of reliable service for the new owners. As you probably know, the manufacturers of CCA voluntarily phased out this treatment for most residential applications at the end of 2003. Fortunately, your lumber dealer now has a choice of preservatives that have replaced CCA. Two of the more popular choices are Alkaline Copper Quat, or ACQ, and Copper Azol, or CBA. We recommend consulting with your building material dealer to ensure that you select the treatment option that is most readily available in your market. One of the biggest issues with the introduction of the new preservatives has been the lack of education about the proper connectors and fasteners. Some of the alternative treatments are more corrosive than others, which means you will need to use the proper connectors and fasteners to avoid rust and corrosion. Most manufacturers now recommend fasteners that meet the ASTM A153 standard. The connectors should meet the ASTM A653 Class G185 standard. Your local building material dealer will have complete information on products that meet these standards. In this project, the designer has specified 2x10 floor joists that span between the outside bearing walls and the center girder. This material will provide solid support for the floor loads. While this project features 2x10 sawn lumber, you may also consider alternative joist systems such as engineered trusses and I-joists. To meet Florida energy codes, the contractor will install R19 bat insulation between the floor joists. The dyers will be sure to enjoy the warmth and comfort of this well-designed floor system. As I mentioned, one of the benefits of a raised floor system is that the plumbing, electrical, and other mechanical systems are easy to install between the joists in the crawl space. If the dyers ever want to add rooms or change the design of this house, accessing these systems will be simple and inexpensive. Plus, if the dyers ever have problems later on, these systems are much easier to repair with a raised floor. Finding a leak or changing the location of a sewer line under a slab foundation is both destructive and very expensive. It's now time to lay down the subfloor. The 3 quarter inch T and G plywood subfloor used on this project is glued to the floor joist using a good brand of construction adhesive. Not only does this strengthen the floor, but the dyers will also enjoy years of service without squeaks and pops common to unglued floor systems. As the crew glues the subfloor to the joist, they also use nails to securely attach the subfloor. So let's quickly review the main components of the raised floor system. First, the base of the raised floor system is a concrete footer supported by rebar. Concrete piers and stem walls elevate the floor platform off the ground. Third, pressure treated girders and seals provide support and bearing for the floor joist. Fourth, floor joists provide superior performance for the floor platform. As previously mentioned, you can also consider engineered trusses or I-joists for this application. Finally, install the plywood or OSB subfloor to finish the job. Now your raised floor foundation is complete and you are ready to continue the framing of the outside walls. I encourage you to seriously consider this foundation system for your next project. Not only does it provide a wealth of inherent benefits, but it could also help create a special marketing niche for your company. I know your clients will appreciate their new raised floor system home as much as the dyers will. Thanks again for joining us. Until next time, I'm Michael Holligan. Special thanks to the Wood Promotion Network, the Southern Pine Council, the American Wood Council of the American Forest and Paper Association, and the Florida Building Materials Association for assisting in the production of this program. To learn more about raised floor systems, visit beconstructive.com or southernpine.com.